Um, so this is a, sl a slightly different presentation, and it's called Here in Classic, Where Are We Now? So what I'm going to be talking about is essentially two things. One, where is ETC now? And uh, two, how can ETC and ETH work better together uh, going forward? First, can everybody hear me all right? Okay, great. Especially with the back of that door. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. Uh, <laughs> and also, uh, a round of applause for everybody here for actually inviting ETC people to your conference. I think that's great. Um, so where are we now? We're, we're actually at an Ethereum conference. So if you know our history at all, you might be asking yourself, how did this happen? And you might expect my response to be something along the lines of this. <laughs> and that's slightly messed up. Thank you, PowerPoint. Uh, but what actually happened is Virgil invited me and asked me to attend. And I can't speak to Virgil's specific motives, but uh, my belief is that there's essentially a disagreement on whether we're more similar or more different. And I'm going to argue that we're actually far more similar than we are different. I don't know what PowerPoint is doing to me right now, but we're just going to go with it. Uh, and the basic thing right here is that when you look at the tech as it exists today right now, the networks are actually very similar in that they all talk roughly the same language, the protocols fairly similar, there's some opcode differences and that type of thing. The JSON RPC API, which most uh, programmers are going to experience is all very similar. But then there are little differences that come up and they come up not because we're completely different projects, but because we split on this ideology a long time ago, we stuck with it very stubbornly, and then we went and just said, that's it. Me meanwhile, these are open source projects. We should be able to s submit some pull requests to each other on GitHub. So why are we separate? I want to go over this just in case anybody's new and doesn't know of the history. Originally, there was one single glorious Ethereum, and it was beautiful, and it still is. And then the DAO attack happened, and roughly like 3.6 million or so Ethereum at the time got taken by an attacker. It was worth about $50 million, and the question became, should we undo this? And there were two obvious answers, yes or no. I think uh, Vlad went over this earlier when he was talking about states. And so on the yes side, we had ETH, and on the no side, we had ETC. And Ethereum was about a year old when the DAO attack happened, and now Ethereum is about three years old on ETC. Uh, we've been successfully operating from the four point for another two years. So we've both been around. And first, before I go into whether or not uh, ETC and ETH should work together, I feel like I should justify why. Why should a smaller blockchain work with a larger blockchain and vice versa? Uh, first and foremost, there's some misconceptions on the state of ETC. We actually have, a, we actually have all the basics. Uh, we're on all the major exchanges. We have tons of wallets. We've got block explorers. We have a test net and all that fun stuff. Uh, and we have a very active community that's structured just slightly differently. So the way we do our community in ETC is our belief is that our blockchain is, should be as decentralized as possible. And I think that's what everybody wants to work towards. And so what we've done with our community is we've made sure that even though we have all these centralized components around our decentralized blockchain, we have different owners of each. And we have, so this way if we want to do something, we have to make sure we get a lot of our people involved to agree. And we're also developer focused. So we have a couple different dev teams, ETC Dev and IOHK and Ethereum Commonwealth. I'm going to be speaking to ETC Dev mostly because that's where a lot of the, uh, a lot of the innovation is happening. So right now, ETC Dev is working on Emerald SDK and Sputnik VM slash sidechains. What Emerald SDK is, it's a, uh, 
it's essentially an SDK that wraps all the th common things you'd want to do on an Ethereum-based blockchain for you. So if you want to manage hardware wallets or check out contracts or deploy things, you can do that through the SDK rather than having to roll your own. I'm sure there's other people coming up with similar things, but ours, we're hoping, is going to be top notch. If you look at Emerald's wallet, it actually runs really great and it's a beautiful little wallet. And it's the first example of this SDK. And then we have Sputnik VM, which is essentially the EVM, but it's taken out of the blockchain and able to run on other devices agnostic to the blockchain. So you don't need to start your, up your own testnet and deploy it. You can just run your code wherever you want. I've seen Sputnik VM running on, a, I should say Sputnik VM, running on even a Raspberry Pi. And lastly, we have a good deal of institutional interest, so Circle, Abra, London Block Exchange, public listing on OTCQX later this year. That's not to say anything so much about price or whatever. I mean, this is a developer conference, who cares? I just want to add one more point to the fact that there are a lot of people who want to see ETC succeed, and I hope more people do too. And so, how can we work together? Like I said earlier, our, we, should, we could probably align our APIs and what I mean by that is there's very small things right now that just became these little pain points only because our different groups weren't communicating. And essentially one example of that is uh, for transactions. Right now if you get an Ethereum transaction off of, uh, off of your node and you look at the status property, you, if you're on ETC you expect it to be empty. But now on ETH, it actually returns a success or fail. And that's related to something else Ethereum did. But that's one little thing where these APIs just have slightly different and they cause pain points for programmers. And another one might be where on the ETC side recently, our implementation of Go Ethereum ended up using, ended up creating a new uh, namespace and doing some, essentially making it so if you want all the transactions at an address, you can just send a JSON, an RPC query and get it back. Uh, real simple, because previously that was a little hard to do. So there's little things like that where I think we both could collectively benefit. And I think we should also be, and kind of related to that, we should be sharing our software more. So like I said, go Ethereum, we have our own. Ella has their own. UB probably has their own. MusicCoin has their own. All these different little Ethereum-based forks have their own. And this wasn't an ETC developer, but an Ella developer who goes by Ellaism. He actually took the current mainline Go Ethereum and he ported it to, he converted it to run on ETH and Ella and ETC, all inside of a month, one developer probably working part-time. I don't know exactly. And both of these things come both of these things come down to the fact that we should just communicate more. And working together tomorrow, these might be things where we could work together uh, more long term. One, I would love to see cross-chain transactions. I think that uh, is a great way to allow for people to make better decisions on where they move stuff around or maybe you want to move stuff from ETC on ETC or vice versa, maybe you want data from another chain, it would be great if you could just pull it and expand that realm of that one central source of trust, essentially. And on top of that, I think ETH, in particular Ethereum, will benefit if better with, with, their, with governance if splits can interrupt. So if your forks happen, I'm not saying they will, I want to just... I'm not going to disclose any opinions on, on such a thing. But sometimes these are, on, these are natural things too, right? Like blockchain split up anyway. Bitcoin split up no matter what anybody tried. So I think, so I feel like you can get just better governance if you will support interoperability between chains. And so moving on to my last point here. Uh, we should probably share technologies too. This may be a little more longer term, but you guys have WebAssembly. WebAssembly is great. And we have Sputnik, Sputnik VM, and it's great as well. And I think they're really interesting here. So WebAssembly, 
the whole idea of it is get as many developers onto Ethereum as possible. Because you have all these programming languages, and if they could all use WebAssembly, you would get so many developers on. And then Sputnik VM kind of has, goes the other way, goes and goes with get as many people onto the ETC chain as possible. So get the ETC chain running on as many devices as possible and communicating. So these two things kind of almost flow into each other. They're both just trying to grab bigger user groups. And so that's basically my talk. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm sorry PowerPoint's a little messed up. If you want to tweet me at PySchool, there's an extra L at the end here. I'd love more followers. And thank you.